What is up everybody? It's Mad Libs and that's right. I'm finally back with another story time speed paint. Woo! I've been trying to do more story times lately because I haven't done them in a very long time and that's kind of what I built my channel on. And I honestly can't believe I forgot about this story because this shit was crazy. Honestly, my whole time at Taco Bell was pretty wild. I have like two more stories that could probably be turned into videos, I think. And plus, that was the place I found out that my manager, who used to bully one of my friends in high school, was obsessed with sex mods for The Sims and she tried to get me to download them. It was a wild place, but let's get back on track. This video isn't about my boss using The Sims to get off. This video is about the Great Taco Bell Robbery. Now, I wasn't actually there when this happened because that day was one of my two days off. So I heard all of this information from my coworkers who were talking about it because uh, considering what the fuck happened, it was the only thing anyone was talking about all day. And now it's time for me to tell you guys about it. Now to make sure that this story hits you guys as hard as it hit me, I'm gonna start the story at the end, specifically the day after it happened. More specifically, the morning that I walked in. Th the first contact that I personally had with it. Okay, let's just put it at that. Okay, close your eyes. Didn't you learn last time? I can see you. Close your goddamn eyes. And imagine you work at Taco Bell. It's a horrible existence, but just put yourself in those shoes for a minute. You wake up, you get ready, you get driven on over and walk into the doors, you know, playing on your phone. And when you finally look up from your phone, you see it. The tablet things on the wall that everybody used to order have pieces of paper on them saying no cash. The registers also have signs on them that say we can't take cash. You walk behind the counter to clock in and see one of the registers open and it's completely empty. Then your eyes drift to underneath the counter and you see the safe. The safe that you put all the money into at the end of your shift to clock out and it is completely fucking busted. The door is wide open, the top of it is dented, the wires have been yanked out of it, and most importantly, it too is completely empty. And as if that wasn't insane enough, after you clock in, you go to ask your manager what the fuck happened. And she tells you that on your day off, another manager busted into the safe, opened all the registers, and took all of the money in the whole restaurant. So that was basically my morning. Well, thanks for watching. If you guys want to go onto my Instagram and my Twitter, they're right here. You know, I got my lovely patrons, my $1 and my $5, and I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. There's a lot more to this story, all of which I learned after asking around all day about what happened. Not only is this story wild, but I've got some theories attached to it. So here we go. Apparently, it all started on a regular day at Taco Bell until they got a call from a number that nobody recognized. And when they answered it, the person on the phone asked to talk to one of the managers specifically. And we'll call her Maya. So they wanted to talk to Maya specifically. So she picked up the phone and talked to them for a little bit. And that's when all hell decided to break loose. Because right after Maya's conversation with this mystery person on the phone, she ran over to the safe and started trying to get it open. Now Maya, despite being a manager, did not have the code to open the safe. Nobody did except for the general manager of the store. So in a panic, this manager Maya went and got a hammer from the back of the restaurant and started swinging at the safe. She swung at that safe for hours, over and over, just swinging at it while business as usual was going on all around her. Customers were starting to look at her and be like, what the, f what, what is she doing? What is going on at this Taco Bell? People would just be like, no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Meanwhile, this lady is going all fucking buck wild on a safe just behind the counter. She actually got another employee to help her take swings at it, which side note, the guy that she got to help out was like panicking to me the next day because I was talking to him and he was like, uh, Libby, I think I'm gonna get in trouble. And I was like, well, what do you mean? What, why are you gonna get in trouble? Because I, I swung at the safe a little bit. Dude, why did you do that? She told me to. She just said, hey, can you fucking help me out with this and get the safe? It's probably just because I'm the, like, the biggest guy over here. And well, I mean, yeah, you are. You're, you're fucking, you're giant and everyone has a crush on you, but that's besides the point. By the way, Ryan, if you're watching this, every single woman in that Taco Bell had a crush on you. Anyway, he was super worried about getting in trouble because he took a couple swings at the safe. He didn't actually bust it open, but he took a couple swings because his manager told him to and he assumed that she had a good reason for doing what she was doing. Which, why? Why would you think she had a good reason for that? All right, side note over. So eventually, after a couple hours, yeah, hours from what I heard, 
she broke the safe enough to get it open. And after she opened it, she reached into the back of it and pulled all of the wires out. She took the money, and as if that wasn't enough, she stopped the cashiers from taking orders and doing what they're supposed to do. She opened all the registers, she took the money from there, she put it all in a bag, and left. She just fucking left. I think she came back afterwards to go back to work, but I don't remember if she did or not. And yeah, all the money was gone. Thousands of dollars, probably, because I've never seen anybody empty that safe. I don't know when they do that. I don't know anything about the fucking safe, because I was just a worker. I wasn't even a manager. But, uh, I'm sure that you're all wondering, why? Why, why, why would she do that? What happened? Well, according to Maya herself, the people that called her on the phone were from corporate, and they said that they got the word from the general manager, who we'll call, um, Karen because she really was a goddamn Karen. And they said that Karen knew about all of this and that Maya needed to take all the money from the safe and from the register, go to Target or Walmart, some sort of retail store, I don't remember which one exactly, and send it all to a certain place or person. And Maya never said who she was sending it to. And if she didn't do it, she would get fired on the spot. So she did it. And that's the story. Or at least that's the meat of the story. Because there's a few more herbs and spices we gotta add onto this meat. So before we move on to the aftermath of all this shit that happened, let's talk about the, um, finer details of this that make the whole situation somehow a lot more shady than it already was. Now, um, I don't know about you guys, but I can smell the bullshit a mile away. If that's really what was told to her on the phone, then that is the most scammy goddamn scam to ever be scammed in the history of scamming. It is such a goddamn lie. I mean, the whole, you have to send it to us from Target, not a bank, is literally the mark of a scam. They do that to you so the money is harder to trace to an actual bank account. Quick PSA on that, if you get a call about receiving money or winning something or having to pay some kind of debt, and the person that's contacting you says that you have to send the money from anywhere that is not a bank, it is a scam. Do not listen to them. Honestly, this whole thing was... Holy shit, it was insane. And if that's true, and my manager really fell for that, she's dumb as a goddamn brick. But I'll be honest here, you guys. I don't think that's what they told her on the phone. Now, before I move on, I want to cover my bases here, and I want to say that everything I'm about to say is alleged. I am not trying to genuinely accuse anybody of anything. That's why I changed the name of my manager. I'm not saying which Taco Bell it was. I'm not going to bring up any finer details that would pinpoint who or where this person is. This is all alleged. The police were already involved in this. It was taken care of as far as I know. And I just want to talk about some strange little details that I noticed when I heard about all this stuff happening. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, I did a little detective work after all this happened. And by detective work, I mean I eavesdropped on everybody who was talking about it because everyone was talking about it all day. And apparently, nobody else who was there heard what was said on the phone besides Maya. Everybody else only heard the they're from corporate story that Maya told them, and they never heard it directly from the people on the phone. And I also learned that Maya never at any point tried to call or text our manager Karen to get the safe's code, which is extremely weird. All of us had Karen's number because she's the one who hires us and she gives us her number for anything, and we all knew that she had the code to the safe. And if Maya really thought that Karen knew about all of this already and was gonna fire her if she didn't comply, why not text her? Why not just say, hey Karen, I got the call about taking literally all of our money from the restaurant and I can't get into the safe like you told me to, what's the code to the safe? Something else that struck me as weird is taking all the money from the registers. We sorta of need that money to make sales on a daily basis. But why would corporate ask for something that would tank our sales for the day and cause money to go missing? And yet another weird thing is that according to everybody who was there, Maya looked freaked the fuck out. Like, she was panicking when she was doing this. And whenever anybody tried to ask her what the fuck she was doing, she would snap at them and tell them to mind their own business. And also, she got a hammer? Even if she actually thought that corporate was telling her to steal all the money from the Taco Bell, wouldn't she think that something was wrong when she was trying to bust into a safe with a goddamn hammer? Don't you think that would set off some bells that, hey, maybe I'm not doing the right thing here? And last but not least, the wires. Why did she pull out the wires to the safe? The wires that power the safe, that keep count of the money, and set off alarms? Why did she rip those out of the safe? You don't need to pull the wires out to get the money. She already had it open by that point. The wires are inside the safe. Why did she take the time to pull those out? That is the most suspicious thing that I have seen in a very, very long time. 
I wish that I had answers for this, but sadly nobody at Taco Bell ever figured out why she did what she did. Nobody ever found out what actually happened. Now, this is just a half-baked conspiracy theory from up in my brain, a bit of a game theory here. But personally, I think that Maya thought she was in danger. Like somebody on the phone blackmailed her or something. With what? I, I don't know. But I don't think she was some kind of criminal mastermind taking all that money for herself. I mean, she broke a safe with a hammer in front of employees and customers on a day that we were open in a place with security cameras. Not only that, but she came back after that. Now, I don't remember if she came back to finish her shift after she did all that crazy shit, but I do know that she came back because I remember walking in for work a day after that happened and seeing her, Karen, and a police officer talking in one of the booths. If she was really robbing the place for her own gain, I don't think she would have stayed in town. But that could also be totally untrue. It is just my theory after all, but I'd like to think that she wasn't a terrible person, you know? But you want to know something, guys? Despite the wild, wild ride, Everything I just told you isn't the wildest part. You want to know what the wildest part is? The wildest part is that she was hired back as a manager two days later. Well, that's the end of the story. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I hope you guys like what I'm showing on screen. I decided to experiment with some stuff in my art and I really like how it came out. If you want to go see this drawing by itself, then you can go to the link in the description. It'll take you to my Instagram where I post mostly just my art. If you care less about my art and more about my half-baked opinions, you can go to my Twitter also in the description where I rant about stuff way before I make videos on it. If you want shit posts that make no sense, like me singing the song Daddy Issues. <laughs> You ask me what I'm thinking about I tell you that I'm thinking about Whatever you're thinking about <laughs> You can go to my second channel, also in the description. And with all that taken care of, it's time for the shoutouts of my patrons. My $1 patrons, Raven and Collide. Thank you so much. And my $5 patrons, whose work is going to be right up on screen. And if you like any of their stuff, then you can go to the link in the description again. And you can go right to their pages and follow them. Make sure to give all these people some love because they are really helping me out, giving me five bucks a month in this time. If you guys want to be part of the shoutouts or you just want previews and to see my videos a day before they come out and all that good stuff then you can go to my patreon link in the description and i think i've uh you know clout farmed enough just now for all my social media so um yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like comment definitely don't forget to subscribe and join the madness see ya